Uh, we're going to have major analysis on what is going on very, very shortly. Major General Jonathan Shaw is former Director of Special Forces and Commander of UK Forces in Southern Iraq. And he uh, joins us now. Uh, Major, good morning to you. Very nice to have you there. Um, this whole uh, Kiev situation and Russian convoys moving on it, uh, what's your analysis of that? How concerned should we be about that? Well, it's obvious that uh, Putin wants to uh, take over the whole of Ukraine at the moment, and uh, and this is just the next move. Uh, uh, but as we discovered in 2003, invading Iraq, actually taking a country down when you've got overwhelming military force is actually the easy bit. The hard bit is creating any kind of stability afterwards. So I think this is going to go on for some time. Um, very alarming development yesterday when uh, clearly in a display of frustration from President Putin, he raised the spectre of nuclear weapons, even using that kind of language, hugely escalating things. Um, how real is that threat and how prepared are we for that? Well, I think, as you said right at the start there, a gesture of frustration. The trouble with uh, President Putin is that he only has one tool, and that's the military. Every other tool he's got is... Uh, um uh, pretty, pretty weak. I mean, he has got the. He, he knows that uh, his weapons of producing corn and producing energy uh, should, in his view, have prevented the European Union and the West giving a strong response. But the EU and the, the West has, has totally sort of ignored that and has just slapped sanctions on America, on, on Russia, uh, and in in defiance of, of those tools. So the only tool that Putin has left is is his weapons and threatening nuclear uh, weapons is is just to, to show that nothing's on uh, off the table. Everything is on the table as far as he's concerned. Ask yourself what possible use, what possible relevance nuclear weapons has uh, in this conflict, and you're really struggling to, to, to find a rational reason. But I think that plays to the hint that, that, that President Putin is perhaps not as rational as, as we might like to think at the moment. But he's also struggling, Major General, with conventional uh, forces. Uh, the consensus seems to be that by day five of his offensive, um, th things should have been you know, a bit more progressing, progressive than they are. <laughs> that is the nature of most operations uh, from D-Day onwards. You know, you, you make these plans and then things don't work out as, you, as you'd hoped. And the question in any military operation is not how good your plan is at the start. It's how you react when your plan doesn't quite work. And I think what you're seeing is, is a traditional problem with the, the, the Russian military is that they're not very good at um, you know, delegating command and people making decisions. It's a very top-down system. Uh, and so structurally, psychologically, I think they're not really well attuned to uh, to adapting on the hoof. I think you've also got the problem that the, the soldiers have been sent in there, uh, having been told that they were liberators, and they suddenly find that they're in for a fight they really psychologically hadn't expected. You made a very good point there. You say whatever they take, they've got to hold them. They've got to police that. Um, and they will be entering into a urban guerrilla warfare situation with any advances they make, won't they? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, that must be the that must be the absolute terror for uh, Putin. I mean, all the all the reports coming out, um, how reliable they are, I don't know. You know, suggest that Putin was was told by his acolytes that this would only take four days and it'd be a quick, sharp insertion. And indeed, if you look at the way the Russians invaded, they didn't. They abandoned their normal tactics uh, and went for a relatively softly, softly approach to try and uh, you know, like standing on a hill and beating their chest and roaring and hoping that Ukraine would just fall down. They haven't. They've fought. And I think that's quite surprised them. Um, and, you know, pity the poor general who's got to tell Putin that his plan's not working, because I think that's one of the troubles with senior command. If you, you become a victim of your source of intelligence, and every indication one gets is that Putin has surrounded himself with yes men, uh, and no one will actually tell him the truth. So, uh, yeah, I think he's in for a bit of a long struggle here. That being said, Kiev is being circled at the moment, isn't it? And it does look as though the Ukrainians, at least, will need uh, increasing support from the West. We've been hearing lots about it in terms of sending weapons and hardware. Is it getting through? I mean, how hard is it to do that in a situation like this, to get, you know, ammunition? As we heard Zelensky saying over the weekend, that's what he needs, not a ride out of there. How hard is it for the West to support Ukraine as, it, as it's under threat without actually putting boots on the ground? Yeah, well, we're in we're in transition, aren't we? Um, 
I mean, my view before the invasion was that uh, was that actually looking at it from a straight military point of view, there's no point to Ukraine forces trying to hold ground. You're much better off just letting the Russians come in and then you attack their soft underbelly. You hit their logistics, you hit them when they're static, you, you hit them with civil protests, which play out badly on social media. Uh, and so you attack them in that way. The, the fact that they've achieved the success they have has been quite a surprise to me, to, to <laughs> not just the Russians. Uh, while we're in this transition mode, um, you know, increasingly it's going to be difficult to get people in there. It's going to be tricky to get supplies in there. Uh, when the Russians have taken over the country, then, then it will resemble more the case in Afghanistan, where we uh, created uh, rat runs into the Mujahideen, and you create these covert routes that take a while to get in there. As long as there are airports that are controlled by the, uh, the uh, the Ukrainians, as long as there are roadheads that they can get to, then we'll be able to send them. But yes, make no mistake, the, the longer, the, uh, the, the further the Russian invasion goes, the harder it will get to get weapons and stuff in there.